Hello students. Now today we are going to start a very important chapter of class 12 syllabus that is human reproduction. Now we know we have an apparent idea of human reproduction. Here we will have a detailed study about the human reproduction. Now first of all is the what type of reproduction it is? Sexual reproduction we all know. It is biparental, that means two parents are needed to produce male and female gametes. Oogamy, that means female gamete is larger, non-motile, male gamete is smaller and motile. Now, there are certain stages of human reproduction. What are they? First of all, gametogenesis, that means formation of female gamete, ovum and formation of male gamete sperm is the gametogenesis. Now we know that it is oogamy. So female gamete is non motile So male gamete has to move to the female gamete. And this transfer of male gamete to the female reproductive tract is called insemination. After insemination, there is fusion of male and female gamete. That is fertilization. Now after fertilization, zygote is produced. Now zygote means a place where it will develop. Clear? So, this zygote forms the embryo and gets attached with the endometrial wall of the uterus and that is called implantation. Once it gets implanted, now the development occurs to embryo to fetus and when the effect, that is called gestation. And when the fetus is fully developed, mature fetus is moves out of the female body and that is called parturition or childbirth. So these are the phases of human reproduction. Today we will mainly concentrate our discussion on the male reproductive system. Now male reproductive system contains mainly two parts. Primary sex organs. Why primary sex organs? Because these are the organs which produces the male gamete forms. And that primary sex organ is a pair of testes. And secondary sex organs, this directly does not produce gametes but helps in reproduction. They contain the duct system to transfer the sperm, the glands which nourishes and helps to develop the sperm, move, movement of the sperm and finally the external genitalia which helps in release of the sperm. Now today mainly we will focus on testes. Now testes. We know testes is located in the pelvic region outside the abdomen. Now, is it formed in the outside the abdomen? No. During embryonic condition, that is roughly in the embryonic condition, it forms in the within the abdomen. But at the fifth month of the embryogenesis, it moves into the scrotal sac, and that is this is called descent of the testes. Why it moves into the scrotal sac? Because the main function of testis is to produce sperm. And the process of production of sperm is called spermatogenesis. This spermatogenesis requests a temperature 2 to 2.5 less than our body temperature. 2 to 2.5 Celsius, degree Celsius less than our body temperature. And which is maintained by scrotal sac. Now, we know everything has some exception. Here also sometimes testis fails to descend in the scrotum and that is called cryptorchidism. So it is a special condition when the testis fail to descend in the scrotum that is called cryptorchidism. The person cannot produce fertile sperm. Size of the testis, it is oval shaped with 2 to 3 cm in diameter and 4 to 5 cm in length roughly. Now, you can see this is diagram. This provides a detailed structure of the testes. First of all, the outer covering. Testes has three covering. First, outer, most outer is the tunica vaginalis. Next is the tunica albuginea. And third is the tunica vesiculosa. So, tunica vaginalis, tunica albuginea, tunica vesiculosa. The now, inside the testes, you can find that these are the some compartments present in the testes. Clear? These compartments are called testicular lobules. Lobules mean compartments and as it is present in the testes, it is testicular lobules. How many compartments there? 
roughly about 250 to 300 compartments are there. That means 250 to 300 testicular lobules are there in each testis. Now, within these testicular lobules, you can see the coil tubules. These coil tubules are very important. These are called seminiferous tubules. Each testicular lobule contains two to three seminiferous tubules and these seminiferous tubules are actually the region where the sperms are produced. So these are very important, mind that each testicular lobule contains two to three seminiferous coil seminiferous tubules which produces sperm. If you go on for the inner structure of seminiferous tubules, we will find that it is Mainly the outer covering contains the germinal epithelium, which forms the spermatogonial cell, interrupted by certain cells called Sertoli cells. Spermatogonial cell actually helps in production of testes, and Sertoli cells mainly nourishes various stages of the testes. And we will also find various stages of the formation of so, spermatogonial cell mainly helps in the production of sperm, and the Sertoli cells nourishes the sperm. Clear and if we go on for the seminiferous tubules, we will find various stages of the sperm formation. Next, now you can see that within the testicular lobules, there are numerous seminiferous tubules, but it is not totally, the whole testicular lobule is not covered by the seminiferous tubule. There are some hollow spaces. These are called interstitial space which contains blood vessels, which contains immunocells and it contains a very important cells called interstitial cells of Leydig. Why it is so important? Because these interstitial cells of Leydig produces the male hormones which are collectively called androgens. These male hormones or androgen is very important for the formation of the sperms and the most important male hormone is testosterone. So, testis is covered by three covering. It contains 200 to 300 lobules called testicular lobules. Within the testicular lobules, there are seminiferous tubules and seminiferous tubules produces palms and there are interstitial cells producing of lady producing the male hormones. So, today till this clear and go through the part. Thank you.